Hello, my name is Dr. Kendrick Scott. Thank you for inviting me to meet with you and to allow me to give you a presentation about who I am and some of the aspects of my teaching methods and methodologies and philosophies. Again, my name is Dr. Kendrick Scott. I have a bachelor's degree from Florida State University, a master's degree also from Florida State University, and a PhD in organizational leadership from the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. My teaching philosophy is that I believe in having a classroom um, that is very student-centered. I believe that um, what we do and what we talk about and how we approach our learning should be student-centered. And that's how I approach um, my classroom. And I find that students um, really um, respond well in a student-led environment where we are uh, our learning modalities come from a various from various um, ways in how we try and teach the students by using stories or um, whether they're um, if we're teaching leadership classes or even some of the human resource management classes and other classes that I've taught um, sometimes we use um, videos maybe from YouTube and we use other 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 learning tools that are not just a traditional um, way that you know, the, the professor gets up and just lectures to the students. So I believe in having that student-led environment. I believe in also, um, if we're teaching the, these, these leadership courses, that um, we talk about theory uh, in, in some, some way. We always introduce theory, but students really need to understand how to apply those theoretical constructs that we talk about, that, 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 that we academics get so excited about, that we get excited about talking about theory, and but we really have to make sure that we um, allow the student to understand and to grasp the material enough where they can use those theoretical constructs in practical matters. And so we do a lot of learning where we show theory and we show theoretical constructs, but we also show how those theoretical constructs can be used in everyday life. Um, with, with everything going on, for instance, in human resource management, I um, was a investigator in human, uh, for, for human resource management on a college campus. And we did a lot of investigations um, dealing with um, sexual harassment, discrimination, um, sexual misconduct. So there are a lot of stories that I have that I can explain to students about these sort of issues if we, when we're teaching these human resource uh, management courses. And so it's very relatable as to what's going on today, as we see even today in the news cycles that um, even more people, you know, high-ranking high people and celebrities um, have come forth, or people have um, either brought forth cases or they have filed lawsuits, or even in some cases, you know, we see it, see these cases going to court, um, dealing with sexual um, harassment and sexual misconduct. And so when we, when we talk about human resource management, it is very, um, it leads, it, it's a conversation that we can have with current events and that we can talk about how to behave in, in, in the work environment. So that's a little bit about me and about my background. And I was looking at the course list and, and I was thinking about some of the courses that I can teach and that I'm, that I'm very adept at teaching and a couple of the courses that, 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 that I did find that was inter interesting, obviously, as mentioned, is the human resource management, um, even the, the leadership and ethics course, um, and corporate governance that, that, um, that's listed. And if I were to, you know, have a lecture, you know, I would definitely, um, have a way to introduce these, you know, starting out with the terms. So, for instance, um, if we were teaching a leadership course, so some of the some of the things that I would talk about in the leadership course is, um, I would first give the students some learning objectives, and those objectives would come in the form of 
Um, the learning objectives of the leadership course would be understanding the full meaning of leadership and see leadership potential in yourself and others. That's one objective. The second objective would be recognize and facilitate six fundamentals of transformations in today's organizations and leaders. Another learning objective would be identify the primary reasons for leadership derailment and the new paradigm skills that can help avoid it. More learning objectives would be recognizing the traditional functions of management and the fundamental differences between leadership and management because there's a lot of talk about leadership and management and as we look at the literature we know that leadership and management there are some variations and there's some differences there as far as what we refer to as leadership versus what we refer to as, as management. So one of the learning objectives that you would learn in this course would be understanding those, those nuances and those differences. Another objective, learning objective would be to appreciate the crucial importance, providing direction, alignment, and relationships with personal qualities and outcomes. And lastly, we would explain how leadership has evolved and the historical approaches to apply to the practice of leadership today. So in other words, we want to make sure that when we're in the classroom that we help you understand the practical, the practicality of um, leadership, of, of, of leadership, of, lead, of the leadership theories and leadership liter literature. So what is leadership? Leadership is an influence-based relationship. There's nothing, when we go through the literature, uh, we go through all of the literature, there's nothing that we can put our hands on to say, this is what leadership is, and this is what leadership is, and, or this is what leadership is. You, you, there, there, there's, there are many different aspects to leadership. But really, the overarching theme that comes out of the literature of what leadership encompasses is that leadership is an influence-based relationship amongst leaders and followers. So you cannot have leaders without having followers. And within this influence-based relationship among leaders and followers, change intended, um, real change has to be intended. So in other words, influence-based relationship among leaders and followers who intend real change and outcomes that reflect this sort of shared vision or shared purpose or what are we here for? Or what are we here to do? Or what are we here to make together? So when we talk about leadership, we also introduce communication theory. And that's one of the things that I want you as students to understand is that you got to be able to communicate your vision and your shared purpose with the people who are following you. And you do this using um Good communication, good communication. So later on, we'll talk about communications and how we communicate, how we communicate those ideas. Because good communication is when you articulate a message and that person hears the articulation of the message in the same way. Basically, the sender and the receiver shares those same ideas that, that, that are heard. So leadership is an influence-based relationship. So what are some of the things that leadership entails? Well, it entails influence, as we've talked about, intention, personal responsibility and integrity, change, shared purpose, and followership. So those are the seven components of leadership that I, that I would like to discuss with you today. So as we start to talk about more in depth of leadership and this influencing others is leadership is influencing others um, to come together around a common vision. It is multidirectional and that means that leadership is multidirectional, meaning that a follower, follower can also be a leader. The leader can lead, but the follower can lead too. So it goes both ways. So if, if, if a person is leading an organization and they need information um, from some of their direct reports, well, in that instance, the follower 
has to lead in that particular situation. So the follower leads and the leader follows that lead of the follower as far as receiving the information. It is non-coercive. So leadership is not something that we force people to do. Leadership is influence. It is non-coercive. And it's reciprocal as in nature. It involves creating change. So leaders, for instance, when a leader, if you look at a sports analogy, when a coach is fired or a coach is let go, and another coach is hired, well, the organization hopes that that leader can come in and do a better job or do something different than the last leader done. So it involves creating change. Some of the qualities required for effective leadership are also needed to be um, an effective follower. So those same qualities are there for leadership and followership. Effective followers, for instance, are self-thinkers who do assignments with energy and enthusiasm. You don't have to, leaders, if you're influencing your followers correctly, you don't have to every day, once they know what the vision is and what the purpose is and, the, 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 and it's shared between the two, well, followers, effective followers, do those tasks without being told each and every day um, what to do and how to do it. Leaders are committed to the common good rather than the self-interest. So leadership is not about me. It's about what we are making together. What about, it, it's about the entire organization and the people that are following them. So it's not, it's for the common good. It's for everyone. However, leaders are also firm in their beliefs. So when a leader is appointed over an organization or, um, or they are hired in an organization, they have beliefs that the organization believe will be beneficial to the organization. So leaders must be firm in their beliefs, but flexible enough to change if those beliefs and those values, those shared beliefs and those shared values need changing. So that's what the leader is always doing, is always reevaluating the plan, reevaluating the mission, reevaluating the goals and making sure that their beliefs, their ideas, their, their values, their goals are always pointed in the right direction towards that common goal that we're speaking of. Leadership is about paradigms. A shared, what is a paradigm? A paradigm is a shared mindset that represents a fundamental way of thinking about perceiving and understanding the world. So if we have a paradigm, we have, we come with these preconceived notions, these preconceived ideas, we all have these paradigms. And it's a shared mindset that represents a fundamental way of thinking about and perceiving the world. That's what a paradigm is. And if, um, if necessary, sometimes you hear the term having a paradigm shift. Leaders have to be depth, influence in the organization to have a paradigm shift, which is entwined with culture. And as we know, when we study leadership, we understand that culture, the culture of the organization is most important because that's the hardest part of the organization to change is the culture. So leaders are adept in understanding these paradigms. They come with paradigms. They, they understand that the organization and the people within the organization have paradigms. And if they need to have a paradigm shift, they are adept at influencing the organization to have these paradigm shifts. So that's a little bit about leadership and we can go into great we'll go into greater detail as the course goes on but i'm so excited um to 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 share with you if you have questions about um about about the lecture if you have questions about some of the things that um that that that, that we've discussed please by all means i have an open door policy email me call me um send me a text um you know and just and, and get in touch with me and let me know. And if something is unclear, I'll make sure that we make that clear. Um, we are here for the students. So with that said, thank you very much. Um, and I'll see you in class 
See you in class in the next couple of days. Thank you. So that's a little bit about me. And that's a little bit about um, how I would do a, a lecture in, inside a classroom. Um, I'm sitting down. Obviously, I would be standing up and and if I was inside the classroom, and and I and also that um, I want it to be known that I'm I'm very adept at understanding online modality, and some of my students I've had great reviews from the online modalities and online learning modalities, and and most students think that I make those 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 online methods and those online teaching methods um, um, or classrooms like we're having an, an on-ground discussion. So thank you very much if you have any questions or if you need me to, 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 to go through any of the other lectures that, that we may have, um, I can do that as well. And so, but thank you very much. I look forward to speaking with you about this opportunity and I look forward to, to sharing some of, my, some of my passions of teaching and some of my philosophies and, and how we go about in the classroom. Thank you very much.